Okay, thank you everybody for attending this quick meeting. This is really a meeting to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we have a good process in place to um, work with merit badges. There are multiple people that get involved in the whole process. We have our scouts, we have our scoutmaster that has to do some signing when a merit badge just gets started. Then we have the merit badge counselor and we have the advancement chair, who, which, which is Sandy Locke, that also needs to be involved in this whole merit badge process. But today I just really wanna focus on us, the merit badge counselors and the workflow and the process we need to follow. And once again, feel free to chime in anytime you have a question. So how do we register as a merit badge counselor? First and foremost, most of us have done this, but I want to just take you through the different steps. So first, you're going to attend a one hour meeting uh, that's usually held by Mark. Most of us have done it. If you haven't, please contact uh, Mark and he'll arrange a special one. It's only one hour. Uh, Eric, you may have to do that. Um, maybe uh, Ko, I forgot to invite Ko, but Ko may have to do this, and maybe James Liu. The second thing is we have to hand in all the paperwork. This was a little bit of news to me that even though I am the scoutmaster, I have to fill out another application, and on that application put in code 42, and put in that I want to be a merit badge counselor. What I did is I, I went right to step two, which was I filled in form 34405 and said, I want to be a merit badge counselor for all the following merit badges. And I started appearing on our council's uh, merit badge list, which scoutmasters get. And the third step is completing your youth protection training. So we all have to follow all three steps, especially now that we are part of a bigger council, there's going to be more processes in place, more checks and balances. So I followed step two and step three, but I forgot to follow step one. So for those of us that are unsure, if you uh, completed the adult application with code 42, you may just have to redo it. So every time, even though you are an assistant scoutmaster, we have to fill out an adult application. Okay, and we'll, we, as part of the new council, we'll have to see if we have to do it every year or we're one and done. So we'll have to see what uh, policies change. So step one, attend one hour training. Step two, hand in all your paperwork. Now we're shelter in place. So that can be forgiven for a while. And then step three is sign up as a merit badge counselor in Scoutbook. This is the one thing that we all have not done. And I wanna walk you through how to register as a counselor. Without this third and critical step, I as a scoutmaster and Mark cannot invite you to be a merit badge counselor within Scoutbook. And I'll show you that in a minute, okay? So what does it entail to become a merit badge counselor within Scoutbook? Yes, you filled in all your paperwork and all of that, but until you follow this, this final step, you are not registered in Scoutbook. So I'm gonna walk you through it, but again, this is a cheat sheet that I'm gonna send you. You're gonna to go to my dashboard, my account, my positions, and then you're gonna add a position. You can see right here, when you do the add, you're going to add yourself as a merit badge counselor. You'll have a choice of registering as a counselor for just your troop or for the council, and I just default say it's for the council and then they'll force you to click that I agree to join as a, a unit leader, but we are, for, for all intents and purposes, all assistant scoutmasters, so that's a no-brainer. So if you give, them, give me a second here, I'm gonna to toggle over and I'm going to um, go in to Scoutbook, okay? Let me just get out of there. So I am now going to log in as a counselor, merit badge counselor. And I'm gonna to go to my dashboard and I'm gonna scroll down to my account. 
And when you go to my account, you'll see my positions. This is where you add your, change your password, edit your profile, what have you, your camping log. And we'll go into my positions and here, these are all the different positions that I hold as Rack Bala. What I wanna do is I wanna sign up as a merit badge counselor. So we're the Alameda Council and that'll change. We are a troop, I'm at troop two. And here, when you go to my position, so what I did is I just clicked on, oh yeah, select the unit. I'm gonna be with troop two because I'm logged in as troop two. And when you click on the position tab, you will see the choices, lots of different choices, but right now, we wanna focus on merit badge counselor. I am available and here's where you can be council list, district list, unit list, which is your troop. I just go for council. And these are all the merit badges that are available to you, all of them. And now you can just click here based on your paperwork that other application you complete, you can now start saying these are my um, merit badges that I am willing to teach. And you'll just click on as many as you want, but it has to be synchronized with the paperwork you're going to hand in. And then you can, what time, did, what, ta, uh, what day did you start? So you, you know, you can even back, uh, backfill this. And while well, I really started in 2017, you haven't ended yet. So that's, you know, if you decide at any point you don't want to be a merit badge counselor, then you, you'll approach me or Mark and we will end uh, your membership there. And then you agree. And then you basically will update. I'm not going to do that right now. And then what will happen is you will scroll down and you will see all the different merit badges that you are listed for. And it says counselor for the Alameda Council. I trust everybody can see that. If you cannot, I'll zoom up my screen. Rack question? Yes, Helen. Um, if, if I want to be, if I'm registered with both Troop 2 and Troop 7, do I have to register for two positions? Doesn't I don't believe so. Um, I did just as a test, but if you are now Alameda Council, that means everybody can leverage your expertise. Okay, so you can just register as a council. You can register just as Troop 7, but I will still see you, okay? If anything changes, I will uh, let everybody know. So this is the whole process that we're formulating right now, and we'll refine it as we go. So as you guys get more engaged in using Scoutbook as a merit badge counselor, please share your key findings, and we'll share our best practices with everybody and update our processes as needed. So these, now you will see momentarily that when I as a Scoutmaster want to assign a merit badge counselor, all these names, all these merit badges will show up on Scoutbook. Without you following this step, I do not know Helen is even available as a merit badge counselor. Okay. Speaking of availability, let's say we are not available in this crazy time with all the children home doing homeschooling. Yep, yep. So would be better? How should we designate that in the... So then at that moment, you're going to just update. You're going to go in and you're... So what I did here, let me just back up. What I did is I went to my list here and I clicked it. All these are very live links. There you go. Okay. And then you can just say, I'm busy. And you just changed your status. Okay. Okay. Good questions. Really good questions. Keep them coming. In Scoutbook, at any moment, all of these are also uh, live. So when in doubt, this is what I do. I just hit my dashboard. Boom. And I've gone back to the top. You can hit the home or you can hit the dashboard. Okay. Okay. So please do that as soon as you can. And um, I have a few merit badges that I want my new scouts to start. They want to start cooking and they want to start another merit badge. And I, right now I am leading all the new scouts merit badges and I'd like to have everybody join me. Mark is really busy doing a whole bunch of them and Clark is also, I'd like to get Eric, Helen, uh, Michelle is busy with family life. So the more merit badge counselors I can see as a scout master, uh, the more I'll, I'll start to disperse them. 
Okay. So uh, let's moving moving on. Let's talk about the different workflows that can actually happen with merit badges. So you got a merit badge, but a scout can initiate and say, hey, I'd like to um, start a merit badge. Or a merit badge counselor can say, hey, I am, I am available to start family life. I'm available to start cooking. And they'll send an email out to the troops saying, please let me know what's going on. You know, whoever wants to sign up, sign up with me. And then the third way of starting a merit badge would be when our scouts go to an, uh, a day advancement camp or they go to a summer camp. And they're all slightly different workflows. And I want to walk you through the different workflows and how it impacts us. So if you look at a scout initiating the actual merit badge, that uh, video I've recorded, it's on YouTube right now. It's, a co it's also multimedia with a combination of PowerPoints and um, a video. Look to an email I sent to the troop on Saturday, April the 25th. It's 15 minute video. I plan on sending an email out to the troop Have um, again, uh, I'm not getting enough views on that. Please take a moment to sit with your scout and review it. And it will really create, um, it will internalize how scouts should initiate uh, a merit badge. So I'm not going to go through all that. Now, for, I'm going to do a mini review of my video. We, for the time being, we're following a parallel process. What I mean by that is we're having a blue card we're signing a physical piece of paper, and then we're duplicating our efforts by going into Scout Book and also registering. As you'll see in the video, the blue card hopefully is going to disappear. In fact, it's really disappeared for all intents and purposes for the shelter in place because Mark and I as Scoutmasters are the ones that hand out these blue cards to every single Scout that wants to start a merit badge. So in Scoutbook, we're going to follow the process as if we were handing out a blue card. So what does that really mean? A Scoutmaster starts and signs off on starting a merit badge. Whether a Scout initiates, whether a advancement camp happens, or a counselor initiates. So one example is we go to the Hornet once a year and we do the advancement camps and Scouts sign up individually. And we don't, as Scoutmasters, know what they've signed up for. But what they will tell us is, hey, Mr. Rack, Mr. Mark, I've signed up for three merit badges. Can you give me three blue cards? And we give them three blue cards. And then another Scout will say, well, I've signed up for four uh, merit badges. We'll give them four. So for now, it's very, it's paper intensive, but the process starts with the Scoutmaster. We then, if, it, if it's not an advancement camp, it's some other, we will assign a merit badge counselor. Traditionally, before Scoutbook was even available, we, had, we were given a list of merit badge counselors by the council. It was a PDF that, that were all registered counselors. So when Johnny would come to me and say, I'd like to start uh, American Heritage, there's nobody in our troop that does American heritage. So I would look um, at that list and assign a merit badge counselor. The merit badge counselor works with the scouts, approves all the requirements, and then approves the completed merit badge. He signs the blue card saying, I am done, hands the blue card back to the scout, at which point the scout master has to do the final sign off saying, okay, I've signed it. That's, that scout then takes the blue card over to Sandy Locke, our advancement chair, and she records us as done. And we are now prepared for the court of honor. This is the process that will continue to simulate within Scoutbook. So let's go to the scenario where we're sheltered in place and the merit badge counselor sends a troop-wide email saying, I'm available, come reach out to me and let's take it. So I know that uh, Bruce Wooten and Wong, uh, Shalab, myself have been initiating a variety of merit badges and this is how they started. They, they, re they reached out to the scouts. 
So here the counselor is going to invite the scouts to join. Scouts reply to the counselor. They sign up. And now the Merivatch counselor, their duty is to inform the scout master saying, these five scouts have now joined my Merivatch. The scout master's job right now is to go into scout book and start the merit badge for each scout that has started. So if you take a look at Bruce, Bruce Wooten, who started programming merit badge, he let me know, here are the scouts that have started. And Wong started reading. She emailed me and said, here's my list and when they started. I then went into scout book and assigned each one of those scouts First, I started their merit badge, and then I invited Ann Wong and Bruce to their respective merit badges. Now, the merit badge counselor will work with each scout. He'll, uh, he or she will approve, sign off. And then once the merit badge is completed, they will sign off on the merit badge. But ultimately, the scout master has to, do, has to have the final sign off before it goes to Sandy Locke, our advancement chair. So for all intents and purposes, the Scoutmaster starts the merit badge for the Scout and he ends the merit badge for the Scout. And the merit badge counselor is in the middle of this whole process. So the, so the merit badge counselor is not signing it off in Scout book? Yes, let me walk you through that step right now. So I'm going to really focus on the last four segments of this process. And I'm gonna show you in Scout Book what we all should do as merit badge counselors. The video hey, that, yes. Yeah, so before we jump over to that part, uh, one quick question about scouts kind of signing up and saying, hey, I wanna do this. We still need to have uh, sort of youth protection even though it's on Zoom, right? So yes. meaning you as a scout master, if you get those requests, I mean, we, we do you still, in the past, you've kind of gated them and said, well, do you have a partner? You know, can you both do this? Uh, find somebody, that kind of thing. So how's, how's that going to work with Scout Book? Right, good. So in the video that I've created, uh, the YouTube video uh, where Scouts initiate, uh, I, I emphasize the value or the importance of having a buddy system. A, uh, so Bruce, you raise a good point. We can never have one Scout joining your uh, merit badge. You can never have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, a scout for a merit badge. The same applies for when I do a scout master conference. I have either uh, the, the parent join my uh, scout master conference or whatever, but even while shelter in place, we as adult leaders can never have a one-on-one, -on -one, even though we're remote. And, that, and how's it, how about one to multiple? One to multiple is acceptable. Did that answer your question, Bruce? My question then is about too deep leadership. Mm -hmm. That does not apply currently. As long as there's more than one scout within that merit badge uh, meeting, the Zoom meeting, we're covered. Okay. Thank you, Bruce, for that question. One thing to note, <clears throat> when you add the merit badge on to the uh, scouts rank advancement, uh, it's just procedural that the scoutmaster does that. They could do it without you. There's nothing in there to stop him or her from adding that merit badge on. So, um, but by the process, we want the scoutmaster added on so he knows that it's happening. Yeah. We have to make sure that the scoutmaster doesn't become the bottleneck. So we'll, we'll keep working the way we're working which is the Scoutmaster starts the merit badge and will have the final sign off on the merit badge. And I'm assuming, Rack, since you have, you've also said the assistant Scoutmasters could be giving blue cards, that uh, assistant Scoutmasters could also be uh, doing that initial sign off in Scoutbook? Um, we're going to cover that. Okay. We're going to cover that. Typically, uh, it's the exception that the assistant scout masters give out the blue card because on the blue card it says unit leader. But with this shared leadership model that we have within our troops, 
you guys are all uh, scoutmasters. You guys all speak for me. I speak for you. We're all leaders together. But when it comes to sign-offs, I want to follow a particular process. I don't want uh, an example. I don't want Rack signing off on a merit badge that Michelle is leading. That's really her uh, domain. That's her silo. And we, I would like to keep it as silos so that that merit badge counselor can keep track of the progress of each of their scouts. I don't want to step on Clark's toes if he is doing uh, camping merit badge and vice versa. Let's just stay in our silos. Okay, let's go to another process where the scout works independently and then I'm going to uh, go in and uh, show you different ways of working within Scoutbook. The one thing that we have to stress to our scouts, regardless of which workflow we follow, the scout always has to enter their requirements completed in Scoutbook. There is one exception I'll talk about in a moment, but we have to emphasize during our Zoom meetings or our face-to-face -face meetings, you, scout, are responsible for telling me you've completed this requirement. It's not my job as the merit badge counselor. My job as the merit badge counselor is to approve, but you'll see an exception. So when the, the scout goes in and, into scout book and says, I'm completed, so he's taking the reading merit badge with Ann Wong and he says, I've completed requirement four. What will happen in scout book is the check mark will turn to green. Now the merit badge counselor, either the scout will email uh, the merit badge counselor and say, hey, uh, merit badge counselor, I've, I've completed two or three requirements. Can you please approve them? Our job is to approve them only after verification. We don't just blanketly just say, oh yeah, sure. If you think you're done, you're done. We have to make sure that they have acquired that skill and they have completed that requirement to your satisfaction. So now what do you do? You're simply going to start from my dashboard. You're going to log in and you're going to follow these steps. And you're going to go to the troop reports and you're going to go to needs approval. So let's just do that right now, okay? And what's going to happen is their green check mark, a scout's green check mark will turn to blue. That means I've approved it. Let's do that. So now, I am going to log in as if I was a merit badge counselor. So I'm gonna log in to troop seven or troop two. Unfortunately, when you become a merit badge counselor for both troop two and troop seven, you'll have to do this process twice. One for troop two verification and one for troop seven. So I'm gonna to go to where it says troop reports, needs approval. And this is all on the cheat sheet that I will be sending everybody. So now you can go to troop two sign offs or troop seven sign off. So I'm gonna to go to troop two and what you'll see is a, a big list here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. You can see that Nolan feels he's got four requirements that he'd like to have sign off. Peru has citizenship of the community. He has one, sign, uh, one requirement done, citizen nation and so on and so forth. McKinley um, has a variety of uh, sign-ups or uh, sign-offs that he's looking for. And you scroll down. Here's where you have to stay in your silo. If Michelle is leading family life, that's, that's her domain to approve, not me as the scoutmaster. If Helen is leading some other one, I'm going to leave Helen to uh, make sure that she verifies it and approves it. So in this situation, I have Johnny Test Scout. So I'm gonna click on Johnny Test. And he feels that he has completed camping requirement 1A. You can see that he logged in on April the 30th and said, I'm done with 1A, 1B. He also feels that he's completed citizenship of the community and so on and so forth. Let me just take you to the top. You can see here on the top of your screen here, it tells you, green is about to turn to blue. So as a merit badge counselor, you are simply going to say, well, you know, I verified 2B, I verified 4B, but I have not verified 6. He feels he's done, but I have not had a meeting 
with him or her to approve it. So that's a little red flag to say, wow, I better uh, reach out to see which other scouts have completed requirement six so that we can meet as a group, not one-on-one. -on -one. But I know that 2B and 4B have done and I'm good to go. So you're gonna scroll down and you're going to mark as approved as the merit badge counselor, okay? Right now, only the scout has put in that I'm completing 2B and 4B. So that check mark is green in his advancement. We're about to mark as approved and yes. Now, if I go to Johnny Test and I go to his advancement, and this is where you spend a lot of time here, we go to citizenship of the community. Now you can see here down below, it says assigned counselor Rakbala. For hiking, counselor is Mark Hovermail, the unit leader is Rakbala. But for camping, I'm also there. Citizenship of the nation, I have no counselor. I have no counselor for that. For reading, I can see for Johnny Tess. So if I'm a parent, I will easily be able to see who the, uh, the merit badge counselor is for reading for my son. It's Ann Wong. For programming, it's Bruce Wooten. So both as a merit badge counselor and as a parent, you'll be able to see by going into your son's or daughter's advancement, you'll be able to see who's assigned and then you can have communication with them. If I go to citizenship of the community, at the top it says, oh yeah, Rack Bala is the merit badge counselor for um, Johnny Test. And you can see that I, as the counselor, have approved 2A, 2B, but six I have not. Even though Johnny has said April 30th, I'm done, I have not done a verification, so it's going to stay green. So we're always going to be between the green and the blue codes. And you can always, if, if you're in doubt, here are the different color codes. Just go to the bottom. When Sandy Locke, our advancement chair, completes everything and says, we finished our court of honor, she will then mark all these merit badges as gold or as yellow. Our job as either Scoutmaster or, or Merit Badge Counselor will be turning green to blue. Scouts do green, we turn to blue. Any questions on that? Okay, good, let's go back. So I'll go back home for a later bit. So that is when you when a scout says, I've completed a requirement, you're going to go to troop reports and needs approval. From time to time, you'll have to just go check it. Once a week, once every two weeks, go check it and see, hey, do any of my scouts need an approval? Hopefully they'll reach out to you, but they don't always. Scouts, you know, they're young. Okay, now let's see, let's follow the process where a merit badge counselor reaches out and says, hey, I'm available, let's start. And some of the scouts have completed the requirements or you worked in a group. So uh, for example, when I led citizenship of the community, I met with all the new scouts. I met with eight scouts. And in one session, we completed requirements one, requirements uh, two, and I think six. But I met them as eight individuals, okay? So option one is you could tell those eight individuals hey, please go into Scoutbook and put your requirements in for requirement one, two, and six. Some of the scouts will do it. Some scouts are busy. They're not as mature. They'll never get to it. I mean, we could say, well, that's on you. We choose not to do that. So we have to send gentle reminders. And this is where you as merit badge counselors, as I showed you before, you're going to needs approval and do the check mark and turn the green to blue. So just like I covered in, the, in a moment ago, you go to troop reports, needs approval, look at Johnny, look at um, Billy, uh, Marcus, and sign off on each one of those individually. Option two, which is a little bit faster, 
since you worked with them, you've already done the verification on uh, together that they successfully, as a group, completed one, two, and, and so on and so forth. You can use something called a quick entry. Now, you can only use the quick entry if you followed my email where I said, you know, uh, use this Chrome extension or Firefox add-on. This is an add-on tool that makes our lives a lot simpler and more e efficient as merit badge counselors. What you're simply going to do, same thing, go to troop reports, but this time you'll go to quick entry and you'll edit merit badge requirements as a wholesale. And that will turn all the eight scouts in one go to blue. You'll bypass the green because you haven't asked those scouts to go in individually and mark that they've completed the requirements. Since you worked as a group, you could just say, forget uh, asking the scouts to do it, I'll just give them credit. So let's go do that right now. Once again, everything starts at the dashboard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize my screen just a little bit. Rack, I'm not so sure that is uh, part of the Chrome extension. That might come with Scoutbook. Okay, good. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, my dashboard, go to Troop 7, and here I'll go to Troop Reports, and I will just um, go in, how come that doesn't show up for me there? Okay, I'm gonna go back here for a second. My dashboard, I'll stick with Troop 2B for now. Quick entry, and here it says, there are two things, I'm going to walk you through both, both of them. They are two different uh, executions. Here we're going to say, enter merit badge requirements. Once again, I did quick entry, entered, enter merit badge requirements, it says which one? Well, I have to stay in my silo, so I'm only going to give credit to the merit badge that I, that I am responsible for. And on the right, you see all the requirements for this merit badge. This merit badge has eight different requirements, one all the way through eight. In one fell swoop, I can say, I know I completed 1A, 2A, 2B, and six with my scouts. Who are your scouts? So first and foremost, I'm gonna work on the left. When did I approve them? We met on March the 23rd. Make sure you check this off. I've approved it. And now you'll say, well, I worked with Cosmo. I worked with Harrison. I worked with Jacob. I worked with Jared. I worked with Johnny. Worked with Lucas, Marcus, Owen. And oh yeah, by the way, no, sorry. Cosmo wasn't there. So you just go back and you take Cosmo off. So in one fell swoop right now, I'm not gonna hit this button. I'm going to say save. Now notice what it says here. This action cannot be undone. If you by accident hit Cosmo, who hasn't started, let's, let's say um, he hasn't started citizenship of the community, by clicking Corbin and Cosmo and Christopher and all of that and saying save, you have automatically, what Scoutbook will do is automatically start their merit badge for them and give them credit for everything you've checked off. So this is a dangerous thing, but it, it's a real big time saver. So for eight scouts or nine or 10 scouts, whoever you've hit, they just will get credit and you will automatically turn the check marks to blue, meaning it's approved. So use it. Um, judiciously, but it's a really cool way of giving credit to a lot of scouts in one go. And that's only if you worked with them as a group. We really, really want to ask our scouts and train our scouts to individually go in and sign their merit badge, uh, sign their merit badge requirements, which will turn that check mark to green.
We want to give them that responsibility. But if you're working as a group, you can help them a little bit and say, I'm going to, I'm going to sign off for you. Any questions on any of this? Okay. Okay, so regardless of the workflow, we have now completed the merit badge. At the beginning of every merit badge, I tell every single scout when I meet with them as a group, you're all gonna start the merit badge together, but you're going to complete the merit badge at different dates. It's not a competition, it's not a race. People have lives outside of scouting. And you know, Billy has baseball and Johnny has this. So don't compete with each other. So we as merit badge counselors need to know that scouts will finish at different times. They'll complete their merit badges at, com at different times. Cycling, for example, could take three years to complete. When Johnny is 10 years or 12 years old, he can do the 5, 10 miler, but he can't complete the 50 miler, which is the last requirement. So my son, Sean, took about two and a half years to complete that, or most scouts will take that much time. I just finished uh, bugling with uh, three boys and we realized they, we finished it in April and it started November, 2017. That was a bit of a shocker. Right. And I, and I tell them, it's not a race. Take your time with it because I want everybody to have fun with their merit badge, right? It, it's not about the finishing line. It's about the journey. So now that the, some scouts will have approached you, they've gone, the scout will uh, go in and, 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 um, finish his merit badge. What you have them as the merit badge council have to do is you now have to go in to the scout, uh, the scouts uh, merit badge record and click on percent complete. I'm going to show you that in a moment. And you're just going to check off on counselor approved and the date that you approve it. Now, here's a nuance. When you go in, and complete the merit badge as a merit badge counselor, that check mark will still stay green. You're then going to inform the Scoutmaster that Billy has finished, Johnny has finished his merit badge, at which point Mark and I will go back into Scoutbook for that Scout's record and will mark leader approved. Similar to the blue card approach, when a scout finishes their merit badge and gets final approval from their merit badge counselor, they have to come back to the scoutmaster and say, I'm finished, can you please sign my blue card? There's one more signature required before that scout can hand the blue card to the advancement chair. So we're simulating that exact same procedure in scout book as you, as the merit badge counselor will approve the merit badge, inform the scoutmaster, and then the scoutmaster will go in and say leader approved. Okay, let's talk about that right now. So I'm gonna go in, and I know that Johnny has come to me and said, I'm finished, Mr. Rack. I'm finished citizenship of the community. I'm all checked out. You've, you've completed everything. So I can't remember where Johnny, who Johnny's uh, patrol is. So I will simply go to the troop roster. So let's do that again. Either you can find um, Johnny through the, the patrol that he's in. I can't always remember each patrol each uh, scout's patrol name. So I usually go to troop roster. And in troop roster, you can um, sort based on first name or last name. I tend to go to first name, but the little gearbox on the right, you can play around with that. So I'll look down and I'll look for Johnny. Johnny's right there. Oh, he's in the trash panda patrol, but that's okay. We're going to go to advancements. You as we as merit badge counselors will spend a lot of time in advancement. Same as I've told in my previous video, scouts will spend most of their time in the advancement section. I will now go in to uh, citizenship of the community and I'll click percent complete. When click on the calendar, I can mark it off as whatever date, counselor approved save. 
I also want to take a moment here that if you accidentally add a merit badge for some scout that you did not mean to, you can go to the same place, percent complete, and remove the merit badge. If you made a mistake when you were doing the um, quick entry and you accidentally assigned somebody a merit badge, you can just go to percent complete and remove. But in this case, I am now going to, as a counselor, approve it. And I'm going to save it. Now notice, if you look here, it's still green. It's still green. Counselor approved it, but it's green. At a later date, once um, you, as the merit badge counselors, inform your scoutmaster that, hey, uh, Johnny, Johnny test is finished, I'm done. You, Mr. Scoutmaster, have to have the final sign off. The leader then will go in and say, oh yeah, today is the third and I have signed it. The last bit is when the court of honor has completed and it will be marked as awarded. And now the green check, if you look there, will turn to blue. At this point, that merit badge has been earned, but it hasn't been awarded yet. Sandy has her own report that she will generate to say which scouts have been award, uh, have been earned, that have earned their merit badge, and then she will go in and make those changes and buy the necessary patches. Any questions on that? So there's a little bit of nuance uh, that the more you practice it, the better you'll get. Actually, I want to uh, take one minute here. Uh, I want to go back. I'm going to deviate from my presentation. I'm going to go to Johnny Test. Johnny has come over to me as, the, uh, as a scout, and he's come to the scoutmaster saying, hey, Mr. Rack, I would like to start a merit badge, and I have four other buddies, and here are their names. I, as a scoutmaster, will go in to Johnny and Billy and Marcus and Cosmo's accounts individually. There's a way of doing multi, uh, a quick entry for starting up also. And I will say, I want to start a Maravatch. And I am going to start, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say, backpacking. So this is me as the scoutmaster because I initiate. So I will see a look up and invite counselor. And right now, I can see Mark is the only one in our district that I can invite. I would love to see more people on this list. He's got a monopoly. He's got a monopoly, okay? So that is how our Scoutmasters start. And if you are not registered in Scoutbook as a merit badge counselor, even though you are a backpacking expert, you will not show up till you register yourself. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> here's an issue, it's not your problem, guys. But theoretically, when you turn in all the paperwork, that should go into the scout system, upload to ScoutNet up there in the cloud, then it downloads into Scout Book. So right now, this is somewhat of a workaround that we go in and register ourselves. I called in to technical support, and they said, yeah, the first way I described should be how it works, but it's not working, so you are going to go in and have to do the paperwork and get youth protection. You simply go within there and put yourself down in a new position of merit badge counselor and select the merit badges you would like to um, counsel for. Okay. Let's move to the next one. This one I'm going to fly through, which is the third workflow. The first workflow is scout initiates. The second workflow is uh, merit badge counselor initiates. The th third and last way of starting a merit badge is a scout attends camp. We're going to fly through this. A scout signs up for classes. 
the Scoutmaster starts his merit badge after he informs him. In this case, the Scoutmaster may not know the merit badge counselor because he's going to an advanced camp. We don't know the name of the person. Um, when Billy and Johnny and Marcus and all of those people go to the camp, they'll sign the blue card and get the counselor's name. Let's say that uh, the scout earns the merit badge right at advancement camp. Merit badge is complete. Scoutmaster signs off in scout book. Okay, he'll just one shot will sign off. Same as Camp Winton. We don't, as a scoutmaster, I don't say that Johnny uh, completed requirements one a, two a, three a. I just say he's done in one fell swoop. He's done. If there's a partial merit badge earned at advancement camp, then I and Mark will assign a local merit badge counselor for backpacking, for camping, for cooking, whatever they got a partial on at advancement camp. And then that our local counselor will take over that merit badge and then eventually complete the merit badge and sign off. All good. I'm gonna show you, I know Clark, you have to leave. Uh, I'm going to do a little summary here, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of other ways of using Scoutbook. Clark uh, knows Scoutbook very well, so Mark feel, or Scout, um, Clark, feel free to drop off after my summary. Right. So key points, things I would like you to remember. Make sure that if you haven't already, please attend Mark's one-hour merit badge counselor training. Make sure we hand in all the uh, paperwork to the council when the timing is right and then sign up for um, the different merit badges within Scoutbook. That you can do today. The minute you do it, I see it. Remember, I still want to assign my, new, my eight new Scouts up to the cooking merit badge, and I don't want it to be Mark or myself. So I'd like somebody else to engage with them. So the sooner you do it, the faster I will assign them. And then follow the process. Scoutmaster starts it. The counselors are in the middle of the process, and then the scoutmaster ends it. Let's all follow that process. Use this cheat sheet that I'm going to send you, and then as, as needed, we'll make refinements to it. If something's not working for you, it's not as efficient as you want, please reach out to me or Mark, and I will uh, we'll make changes as, as a troop. Right now, it's been ad hoc, and I'm trying to remove the ad hoc and do a formal process. So that's really the formal part of the training I wanted to conduct. And I'm going to stop the recording now.